Yes. Okay. Um, I think we have everybody. So uh, next up are Aura and Ezra from Akamai, who are here to tell us uh, the universal truth that it's all about uh, the money. At the end of the talk, small reminder, if you think they really did well, give them a green card. If you think this talk was a waste of your time, sneak in a red card so they don't see it. And with that, I'd like to give them the, uh, the stage is theirs. Thank you. Um, so, again, my name is Or, and with me, Ezra. Both of us are work, working at Akamai. And today we are going to talk about malicious monetizing AppSec features. And, well, it's probably obvious to most of you, and we will talk about it in our presentation, it's all about the money. Money makes a lot of motivation, and we will show that. So, well, let's start with a story uh, in our presentation. And the story started when the red phone was ringing. And when the red phone is ringing, we are getting very excited about it. So this is how we look when we get excited. But we can look much more excited if we want to. OK? And we'll hopefully sh show you that later. So part of the, the, the thing that we uh, were doing is that we got a phone call from one of our customers telling us that there is some issue in his application. And when we get the call, we get into the data. We look into the data and try to realize what really happened there. And in many cases, when we do that, we start from bottom to top. We look at the very basic unit of data. In our case, it's HTTP request. And once we looked at that request, we were able to see that this is an request going to the vulnerable app.com. It's not actually the name of the application, obviously. We mask that. And we can see that someone is well, going to the link page with a parameter named URL. And in that parameter, we can see a um, domain name. So, and, and obviously, we can see a response status code 302 coming from the server. So we pull up a similar request to that application, try to mimic that request. And bingo, we got a redirect request. And this is how we look where when we are very excited. And well, that's the beginning of that. And in order to talk about what we have seen, what we have just saw, which is an open redirect vulnerability, let's explain a bit about open redirect. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. But let's start by, by talking about it. So according to Mitri, an open redirect vulnerability is when someone is redirected from the application to a different place, whether it's external link, external page, or whether it's inside the application. So how it is being used maliciously, are, according to us top 10, it can be used in order to install malwares. It can be used in order to do a bypass of access control, and that usually an internal link. And it can also be used in order to disclose a password by obviously doing a phishing attacks or stuff like that. And the severity and impact of that, well, according to us top 10, which is number 10 in the list, the impact is moderate and exploitability is average. And according to Mitri, uh, the, the likelihood of exploit is low to medium. Well, it made me uh, wonder about it because it seems like the, um, the impact of that, of this open redirect vulnerability is pretty low on medium. And while thinking about it and trying to realize what's the, what's the reason for that, why does it happen, I think the answer for that is that I think the sentence that I'm hearing most of my, my career uh, by developers, they're saying, well, it's not a bug, it's a feature. It's a feature redirecting from one place to another place. This is how they build this feature. Well, how does Open Redirect look like in a phishing attack? First step, a malicious guy is sending me an email with an, a link to facebook.com, which is good application, an application that I trust. And once I'm pressing that link, I'm being redirected from facebook.com to fakebook.com, which is obviously a malicious application. Assumingly, of course, it's an example, but Facebook has a vulnerability in parameter name URL redirecting me to fakebook.com. Well, this is what happens. 
I'm actually now in front of fake, Facebook.com. Most likely, Facebook.com will look very similar to Facebook.com. And then they will try to maybe steal my passwords or any other credentials. So before moving forward, I would like to spend one minute talking about the system that we are work, working on in order to explain how we get the data and how we tell the story that I'm about to tell. And I will talk about Akamai uh, Content Delivery Network um, vendor that has intelligent platforms about Akamai. Well, we have almost 170 servers around the world, maybe cit many cities, many countries. A lot of data goes through Akamai system, which is interesting. But the more important part here is that between 15 to 30% of internet traffic goes through Akamai. Our story is based on that data. This is what we are going to talk about, the data that goes to those servers. So we started with a single HTTP request going to application, and we saw that this request is abusing, most likely abusing open redirect vulnerability. Now we want to move forward and do more uh, intelligence on that data. So the first step that we were trying to do was, let's try to look at att attacker's activity. So we have an IP address that sends malicious traffic to an application. So we, try to, we want to look on all the traffic going from that attacker, from that IP address to the application, to the vulnerable application. Oops. No, a okay, so, sorry for that. So again, one attacker to the vulnerable page on a time frame of 24 hours. And we were able to see that that attacker is redirecting traffic to more than 1,700 different domains, different applications. The second step of our analysis, well, let's try to see if there are other attackers on that application, attacking that application, attacking that vulnerable page, and well, what's the common thing about those attackers that they are doing excessive access to that vulnerable um, page? And surprisingly, we were able to see that there are more than 1,000 IP addresses that are performing those kind of excessive access to the vulnerable page on that application. I think that at this point, we understood that we have something here and we want to, be, to look further into that. So just to like, see graphically what we have seen so far, we have 1,000 IPs, we have one open redirect application that is, that's vulnerable to open redirect, and there are more than 1,700 domains that are redirecting to. Step number three. Now we know that we have 1,000 IP addresses that are doing something malicious. Now we wanted to look at across all Akamai platform. Look at all the data goes to all the Akamai customers and try to figure out if there is something happened there. And surprisingly, we were able to see that those IP addresses abuse more than 4,000 vulnerable application to open redirect and redirecting to more than 10,000 different domains. That brings us to an entirely new scale. Again, graphically, 1,000 IPs. Now we have 4,000 open redirect vulnerability going to more than 10K domains. Step number four. Now we have a big story with a, a lot of data. And we'd like to do, well, up till now, we were doing zoom out. Now we want to do zoom in into the data and look, and look into that and see if there is something, uh, there is a common denominator in that data. And the something that was common to all those 1,000 IP addresses that sends attacks was the user agent header value. The actual value was the same across all those one IP addresses. And well, that led us to believe that those one IP addresses are actually one attacker abusing many IPs across the internet. And this is how it looks graphically. We actually have a single distributed attacker abusing many IP addresses. So we reach out to the final step in our analysis, which is step number five. Now we have the data, we have the story, and we want to do some security data intelligence on that. The first thing, well, we have one, uh, we, end, we have 10,000 domains, and we looked at those domains, and we can see that these are legitimate applications. They are not 
phishing application. They are not installing malware if you go to those applications. They are legitimate applications. Low-ranked applications, but legitimate ones. More than that, looking at those 1,000 IP addresses, we can see that 40% of them are actually proxies, and open internet proxies. Looking at the 4,000 vulnerable apps, and we can see among them, well, applications that are for well, um, vendors that are in Fortune 1000 companies. Meaning they, these are not vulnerabilities in some neglectic, uh, small, medium business kind of application. These are very large companies. And that led us to believe that what we can see here is, well, we can see an activity that is part of search engine optimization attack. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that. So how does the attack look graphically? Well, up till now, we talked about, well, and, and I will explain about that. We talked about um, the activity that, that as, the, as part of the attack, is doing the maintenance of the attacker. Attacker is trying to make sure all those open redirect vulnerabilities are still active, and he can go through them to all those applications. And this is what he is doing by abusing those proxies. But the scale of the attack is much, more, is much bigger. The first step of the attack is the attacker is putting all kind of spam across the internet, including those vulnerable applications, redirecting to different applications. And the second step of the attack is that he's using well, the maintenance that we saw so far and trying to make sure that those, well, those links and those open redirects are still active. The second part of this well, campaign comes from the search engine optimizations. that go to the spam servers, press those links, virtually press those links, go to the uh, vulnerable application that has high rank, that has good reputation, and from there being redirected to those, well, 10K domains that we saw before. Doing that over time will improve the ranking of those domains. And, well, when we think about it, What's the motivation of that attack? The motivation is obvious. It's money. It's all about the money. So what have we seen so far in our story? First thing, well, Open Indirect is not only being used for phishing and uh, installing malwares. It can also be used to SEO attacks. Another thing that well, we get a lot of insight that can only be achieved when you are having a wide vision, a wide view on, on a lot of data. And that, well, uh, and cloud-based threat intelligence tools can give you a lot of, well, an, a lot of tools to do those kind of insights, to get those kind of insights, which is important. Another thing that we can see, well, when money is involved, when money is your objectives, when you are driven by money, the scales of an attack usually go high. And we also need to do two, two things. The first one is we have to know how to. How to detect and how to defend against such attacks. And we need to do another thing. We need to look beyond our top 10. We need to look beyond the trivial things. Or, well, they are not trivial, but the important things that are in top 10, we need to look, to look into things that are beyond those 10, 10 uh, things in the list. Now we'll hand the um, speaking to Ezra. So I'm going to. So I'm going to continue speaking about uh, some of the technical details of how to actually detect this in your particular platforms without the need to do big data or anything. Just few small data analytics and log-based uh, detection. And I'm going to start with. Uh, typical access logs that you probably know about, that you had probably seen. And in this scale, it doesn't give us a lot of information to us because it's too much data. So I'm going to give you a couple of uh, advice to be able to identify this particular attack easier. So the first thing that we want to recommend you is to identify all the places where you accept external URL parameters in your application. Uh, if you have run a secure development lifecycle program before, you probably know, know it. But not all the places know where, where are the parameters that you accept this. Uh, using the access log and doing simple regex could go a 
very good to, to find these par parameters. You can just go and play with the amount of characters that you want to find before the, before the character that you are looking for. Instead of 0 to 10, you can go 0 to 20 or whatever. And from there, start part, and where is uh, your afterwards? It will be easy and simple just to identify the parameters. And put it in the table and see that you will have something like link and URL where you will see URL parameters. But you will also see a amount, help, or whatever other parameters where you don't have uh, domains. So I'm going to give you a, a, a little bit disclaimer. This table is misleading. You will see a lot of small numbers in a amount and help because probably scanners are trying to do RFI or whatever, but not on the same scale that the places where we have actual domains and actual parameters. Afterwards, try to identify what are the usual links. Where do you, where do you are actually linking to? Uh, are you linking inside your industry? Are you linking inside your website? Where are you sending your users to? And this can also be, be uh, done with the, with the output of the previous uh, regex and just do start unique C and count the amount of domains. And we will see something like this. We will see like your domain.com, which should have a big number, which could be related probably to an internal attempt to internal linking or an internal attempt to authentication bypass like my colleague Org was talking about. And we will probably will see the strange domains that we, were, that we were seeing in small amounts, those domains that the attackers were using for the maintenance of their network of SEO. And they are simple to, to look in the eye because it's, it's not the usual stuff that you should be linking to for. Uh, another indicator of compromise, and this one is quite simple, we had seen it a lot in the wild. It's an actual very old exploit in the PHP info function, which it was discovered by Stefan Ezra in something like 2005 or six, I don't remember. And he, he just found out that if we are doing serialization with the A parameter in the info PHP, the contents will be, uh, will be run outside of the HTML encoder so it's an actual excess. And uh, they are using it to, to put in their uh, HTML injection, which will follow by the crawlers. Uh, by doing great uh, info PHP and the A open and close, you will find this uh, particular redirections where we can see that they just try to do ahref and the domain that they want to, in, to improve the the score. Uh, it's a very simple exercise that you can try to run in your logs and you will probably find this a lot. So just to summarize with this, uh, these three techniques to identify, there's first the template-based signature to identify which parameters we are using. The second is to order by access domains and the third is a simple indicator of compromise just to detect if somebody's actually abusing this. So, now that we know how to detect if this actually happened, let's try to do defensive coding to prevent this kind of vulnerabilities. So, the first step is do not allow open redirects. Uh, if you, but if you must, uh, let's follow the advice from OWASP. So, uh, in the web page, we, it's written there, force all redirects to first go through a page notifying your users that they are going off your site and have them click a link to confirm, which sadly, as we have proven here, this technique is being used for the SEO. So this is not the advice that we would recommend. And if, instead of that, uh, try doing, again, if you must have an open redirect, go for a whitelist approach, which domains you want to approve, and everything that is not in the whitelist, just don't approve it. Uh, we know that a lot of business owners will come back and tell us, no, but we need to be able to redirect to every single domain. We cannot manage an up, uh, a whitelist approach. So the second piece of advice that we can provide in this scenario 
and to, to defend about this particular attack, just do disable open the access to the robots. If the attack is against a crawler that is actually harvesting those links for beneficial purposes, let's just make it harder for them. Uh, by disabling with robots.txt the crawling of this page and the follow links, and also by, you, by using HTML meta tags to explicitly disable the follow links part in this, uh, in this particular web page. Uh, also, another good advice is if you must have, if you cannot have the whitelist approach, and we already did the, the detection of the, uh, disabled the, the crawling and the robots, uh, just save the list of the redirected domains, having, us a, having it as a good development practice, have somebody review them and in, insert them in a blacklist. Again, this is not the best approach. This is not what I would like to recommend you, but I know business owners and business owners could be sometimes very pushy about this kind of stuff. And the next and obvious one is ensure that there are no XSS nor HTML injections in your website, as we've seen previously in the previous slide, in the previous two slides, they are using the HTML injections not as an XSS, but rather as a, not as a, as a technique for executing JavaScript, but rather as a technique for including links that will be followed by search engines and will be used to improve the ranking on the particular website that they want to do that. So, if we manage to, to after we finish talking about this particular scenario, I want to talk about three other techniques that we also recommend you going beyond the West Top 10. Uh, these techniques are not necessarily, uh, these techniques, if you already manage to go through all OWASP security issues, congratulations, you have done what nobody else has been able to. But nevertheless, let's, uh, let's also talk about these ones. So let's start about web scraping. And before we start about web scraping, I would like to read the definition. It's uh, web harvesting or web extraction is a command software technique for extracting information from websites. This means it's a computer tool that's, that it's interacting with your website to extract information that could be used for many different reasons. Like, for example, scraping all your price lists, storing them in a database, and also scraping your competitors. And just putting which is the cheaper price or just affecting for your business to which would be the cheaper product and they will probably be able to affect the revenue of your company. So they are harvesting your application's feature for financial reasons. And how does it look actually? It's basically a web scraper that goes through the get catalog page and starts playing, for example, with the number parameters and going through them to get a copy of your entire, of your entire catalog and storing it on their website. This is a very common practice that we have seen in the lot. How much we had seen it? So basically, we analyze it 24 hours of data on all the ICAMAS platform data, which is something like 85 billion requests on a day. Out of it, 9.4 are bots. 9.4% are bots. We are talking about 8 billion requests that are being performed by computers which are categorized as this. 24% uh, we were unable to categorize. We are still doing research and we are still identifying what does that mean. 6% are API engines, which are probably stuff that you, in the first place, you designed to be accessed by scraping on by normal computers, accessing computers. That's why there are an API. 26% are the search engines and site indexers that you are probably looking forward to seeing in your website. At the end, those are the ones that are driving you business, and these are the ones that bring in you customers. 1% are security scanners. We're talking about stuff that goes through your website, search for vulnerabilities, and 
probably it could be a service that you paid for or it could be a malicious attacker that it's trying to identify vulnerabilities. And 42% are those crawlers, paders, and scrappers, scrapers that we talked about previously that could be affecting your business by stealing information, by stealing your, your, your information that could be used but, uh, by other by their web pages or portals just to find the lowest prices from your products. And not a lot of businesses like them. So they, in, they try to apply certain measures to be able to block them. But as we saw previously, this is a money-driven attack. And when attacks are money-driven, we are talking about a different scale. For example, a very common practice is to try to set a JavaScript, a JavaScript-based uh, JavaScript challenge, which should be only solved by browsers that support JavaScript. Uh, so attackers are starting to use headless browsers to evade detection. We are talking about PhantomJS and Scapy and many, many different uh, browsers that can solve those JavaScript challenges, making it much harder to detect them and block them. Uh, they are also using proxies and botnets to obfuscate the identity and to load balance the traffic. We are seeing that instead of doing 1,000 requests to get all your catalog from a single IP, they are doing 10 requests around 100 different IPs. And it's, as, as they are doing it slow and under the radar, it's much harder to identify them. And we, we had also seen some very interesting and very cool stuff that basically they are scraping entire verticals they are going through all the financial or to the hotel or to the travel or whatever to try to find the, the lowest price. And you had probably read about it and had found these scripts on the internet that as, as send users are useful, but as business, they hurt the business a lot. Uh, the solutions, well, there are a lot of solutions. There are a lot of techniques to to to. to block about scraping attacks. It could be in implementing captures or rate controlling the amount of IPs or just there are many different solutions to enforce this. Uh, the, next, the next point that we also want to talk that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not in the actual lowest top 10. It's something that we like to call it shady redirection, which is actually a kind of a phishing attack where the objective is not to steal credentials. And also the objective is not to do SEO. Here the objective is to redirect the end user to a fake product shop. And they are using by intermediate domains to be much harder to track them. The interesting, here, here, the interesting thing here is that they are combining uh, stored excesses and comment spamming. And they are doing something very innovative, let's talk it about it. They are taking te uh, techniques from the marketing world to do conversion tracking. They are actually using JavaScripts to, to, to get a hold of who clicked and where did he came from and which domains are still active and all the information that it's useful for marketers. Well, these guys, these criminals are also marketers and are also using this information in a probably statistical way. And it works something like this. First, the attacker, well, he injects stored excesses into a vulnerable domain. Uh, and he also creates a website called fake.com, which sells whatever fake products. And then he starts doing comment spamming. Uh, the comment spamming, it's being accessed by the, by the end user and makes us much harder to actually identify which is fake.com. The redirect is not being performed directly to fake.com, but rather going to a uh, stored XSS inject domain in the, uh, in the middle. And not only that, in this stored XSS, there is also this conversion tracking that it's actually reporting here all kinds of interesting information from the user, like his user agent and his referrer and which pages he clicked from. This enables the attackers to keep a tab of which domains are still vulnerable, 
where are they coming from, and if the campaign is actually paying off. Uh, the advice here is, as we talked previously, uh, try to make it harder for the, the money-driven attackers to do this, like try to keep your domain free of XSS and HTML, try to do moderation on the kind of comments that you are getting into your web page. These are techniques that have been recommended for a long time. Uh, the third uh, thing that we want to talk about would be uh, something that you had seen probably a lot and you had probably heard, and actually it was on this morning's keynote, which is the DDoS ransom, which is something like this. You have a DDoS army ready to attack your website. You either pay us $300 in bitcoins, please, in 24 hours, or I will crash your website again. Again. Good day. So, at this point, you have two options. You do not pay, and they are going to try to DDoS you. And you, or you pay, and you become a victim for life. Basically, paying protection for money through the entire career, like mob and criminals, like the old classical criminal world. Uh, what can we do against it is just to identify which are the most expensive applications, application parts in our website. Like for example, if we know that there is a particular web page that those transactions to the database, and um, it could be abused, ensure that we do rate controlling and not, ensure, and not allow more than X requests before just putting a CAPTCHA or doing something that could be harder to do uh, automatically to, to DDoS the web page. So, so the, if you want to summarize what we have seen so far, so the first step is in, it's something that we saw uh, on the entire uh, presentation that, well, we believe that the, the greatest motivation for a hacker is, is money, and it's all about the money. And we saw that when the attacker's objective is money driven, they will, the attacks will scale. And it will be much harder to identify as they are using more resources and they are using more, uh, more endpoints and it's much harder. Well, we, can, we were able to see that, well, attackers are using a known attacking techniques such as uh, uh, the open redirect vulnerability and abusing it in order to do new kind of attack, which, which is the SEO attacks. And we also see that no branding, not known attacks are being rebranded and monetized, like the old XSS uh, exploit being used for SEO or, D or the DDoS being converted to a ransom tool to get money. And, and the final thing that we would like to say that there is a call for action. We, we believe that there, the OS Top 10 is a great document, it's doing a great job for all of us. But I think that we should look further beyond the OS Top 10 and try to to mitigate all the things that are out there and the things that are threatening our organization and take money out of our organization. That's all. Thank you. Um, if you, oh, yeah. sorry. Thank, thank you very much for, uh, for this talk and showing us that paying bug bounties is not the only way you can lose money from hacks, but actually getting hacked is worse. Um, for the audience, uh, if you like the talk, please remember to drop a green card in there. If you don't like the talk, don't let them see you drop a red card in them. They have a serious platform to DOS you. Oh, shouldn't have said that. Um, if you think it was OK or so-so, don't drop a card in. And, and you can uh, put double green cards if you want. <laughs> so um, if, if you have any questions. Yeah. So any questions? In general, Sorry. Especially in regards to um, the web scraping case, what, what, um, can you just give any detail on any of the, um, the mitigations that you see working? Have you got any data on that from the platform? So, oh, uh, I will answer that. Um, there, there is no doubt about it that well, it, it's a competition against the attacker that it's not easy. And in many cases, we feel that winning the competition is not right. 
if you will, if, if your action is to block scrapers, then I think that you are making mistakes. Because once you block them, they will find another route through your application. I think that our job is to make their job much more harder, make the, the scraping a lot mu much more uh, slower. And by doing that, by taking them into the level that they have to raise the level of their sophistication and the amount of data that they will retrieve from application will be very low, that will give us the ability to, you know, to, to be in the balance where the, their attack is not effective. That, that's, I think, the good answer that I can give on that. The best. Someone else? Thank you.